What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Listography. It is time for Album of the Year, counting down our top five favorite albums of 2003. I'm Kramzer. We got Jason and Joe. So what's going on in 2003? Um, I think there is a ton of great music. There's a lot of very about to become super established people at the top of the pop charts, um, hip hop really taking off. Um, but there is so kind of what we alluded to in 02, kind of this sentiment throughout the States, at least this kind of massive anti-terrorism thing going on. Um, this is the year Springsteen will tour the album, The Rising and the tours for like 14 months and sets a bunch of records. Dixie Chicks get kind of um, canceled on the radio because of their anti-Bush, anti-Texas sentiment. They're like upset that he's a Texan. That backfires horribly. Um, same kind of happens with Pearl Jam. Everyone's really sensitive. They talk about being against the war and against Bush and a lot of people walk out on the show and they're like, no, we support the troops. And there's just kind of like this big ugly whirlwind of politics going on. But on a plus side, it's a great year for live music. Everyone's starting to get more comfortable with big events, big gatherings. Coachella um, debuts this year. Lollapalooza returns. And in Toronto, they have the largest Canadian show on record as they do a massive um, SARS event with the Guess Who, ACDC, Rush, Rolling Stones, Pretty awesome. And the iTunes Music Store debuts as well. Top five Billboard albums. You've got Get Rich or Die Trying by 50 Cent. You've got Come Away With Me by Nora Jones. Dangerously in Love by Beyonce. The Number Ones by Michael Jackson. And Home by the Dixie Chicks. For me, 03 is a bit of a step down from 02 but I've still got five stars on a bunch of these and I've got a lot of stuff I like. So who's kicking it off? Jason? Me, me. Uh, well, 2003, I got a ton of stuff on here. 2003 is loaded for me. Gosh, too many to mention, but I will call out. I remember I had a blog in 2003 called The Rolling Scone. And on my blog, I believe my top two were Blink-182 self-titled uh, and number one was Sing the Sorrow by AFI. I believe that's what I had. That's what I was listening to back then, but that's not what it is now. Um, Blink-182 does not make my list, but I do like the album. It's in my also also list along with Room on Fire by The Strokes, Absolution by Muse, and Welcome Interstate, I know. Blowing your mind. Welcome Interstate Managers from Fountains of Wayne, which, of course, Stacy's mom, an all-time classic in my mind, uh, but not making the list. So what is on my list? I do have AFI, Sing the Sorrow. This album holds up. Still love it. Still great. They're kind of pop punk album, but it's, it's awesome. I also have Jay-Z with the Black album. Is first retirement album of like four that he would do but it's great 99 problems a whole bunch of good stuff on here uh also making my list i got shoots too narrow by the shins i don't think this would have made it if we hadn't done the shins listography but i listened to it again today and it's just spotless it's peerless fantastic little indie pop rock album so it's making my list uh, and then the top two, this is a tough one for me because I listened to the one today and this week and if it's so good. It's even better than I remembered, but I can't quite put it at the top. So my runner up, runner up, officially Permission to Land by The Darkness. This is another so fun. The riffs on this album are so good. I listen to it really loud in the headphones and it just rocks. Every song, amazing. But I got to go with the one that I've listened to by far the most out of this whole list. It's going to be Coheed and Cambria in Keeping Secrets of Silent Earth 3. And I'm a big Coheed fan. Finally get to admit that to the world. Have been for a long time. 
the only band I've ever seen twice. Interesting fact about me. And this album in particular, you know, it's it's basically emo prog. There's, you know, emo-ness a little bit coming through. Claudia Sanchez has a really kind of high squeaky voice. But the guitars are classic rock. People thought they were kind of influenced by Rush. They claim they never heard Rush when they made this, but there's a hidden track called 2113. So I feel like uh, maybe they had heard of them, but a lot of complex songs, tons of different parts, uh, but they can do a nice pop punk song. Favorite House Atlantic was the big one from here. And I can, I can see if you don't like the high squeaky voice, you're not liking this, but I really love the guitar work. I love the bass work. The drums are great. The songs are really interesting. It's like spacey, prog, Star Wars. You know, it's, it's really kind of cool story, super dense. You basically need to read a comic book to kind of clue in. But basically the overarching themes, you can kind of get the spaciness, the fight of good against evil, rebels and empire, stuff like that. And I just really love the way it sort of takes Prague and kind of modernizes it a little bit. And the guitar works great. It's a little bit of metal, a little rock, lots of Prague, a little emo. Just a really fun album. First of a bunch that I'm going to have in my top five. You can't stop it from happening. Uh, interesting to see what other people think about Coheed. I don't know if anyone else is going to have them in their list, any of the commenters, but we shall see. I got I to gotta stick to my guns here and uh, go with Coheed for 2003. They're not going to make my top five, but I'll, I'll back you up. They're one of the only bands of this style and genre that I like. I have seen Coheed live. I listened to this album a good bit when it came out, so I, I got your back. Uh, 2003, pretty good year. These are all good years now. No more, no more weak ones from here on out. Some good stuff that didn't make my list. I've got, um, or I don't got, uh, Hello Starling by Josh Ritter, 1972 by Josh Rouse, Out of the Shadow by Rogue Wave, Action Packed by Sloan, Room on Fire by The Strokes, which I actually like more than Is This It. I think it's really good. It Still Moves. By My Morning Jacket, From Every Sphere by Ed Harcourt. So those are some of the just misses. The ones that are making my list are going to be So Much for the City by The Thrills. I uh, really like this record. Uh, Irish band, heavily influenced by 60s American West Coast pop, Beach Boys, Birds, all that kind of stuff coming through in their, in their songs. I've also got Transfiguration of Vincent by M. Ward. I like all the old M. Ward stuff, so every year that he puts out a record, he's going to be in the mix for me. Then I've got my favorite Bell and Sebastian record, Dear Catastrophe Waitress. Really like this one. Love the melodies. Uh, produced by Trevor Horn of Buggles and Yes fame. My first runner-up, though, is going to be Youth and Young Manhood by Kings of Leon. I absolutely love the first handful of kings of leon records i think they're so awesome they were one of my favorite bands back then uh but my number one if you saw our shins listography you may have an inkling of what i'm choosing it's uh shoots too narrow by the shins as i said in that video this was kind of my gateway into indie music. It just really, really struck me. I think that the melodies on it are all fantastic. The lyrics are great, but you have to, I mean, when I listen to it now, it sounds like a completely normal record to me, but coming from the world of listening to like almost exclusively Dream Theater, Rush, Tool, all this heavy music, this record was so different. It sounded so dinky and small. It just really opened me up to a lot of different sounds and different approaches to, to rock and pop music. So um, if you want to hear me talk about it more, you can check out that video. I, I say a bit more about it, but I love it. I think it's great. Do I know my boy or what? Privately called this one. Also got O2 right in our private, which you guys can't see, um, text message group. A lot of carryover from Jason's mention and list. I also... Uh, Bell and Sebastian, I've got From Every Sphere at Harcourt. The Thrills didn't make my top five uh, so much for the city, but I um, considered it. Also considered You Are Free by Cat Power, 
and the earth is not a cold dead place by explosions in the sky. I've got Ryan Adams rock and roll in 03. I've also got It Still Moves by My Morning Jacket. I've got maybe my favorite Yola Tango album, which I don't really think is anyone's favorite Yola Tango album with Summer Sun. And I've got, Jason called it as a nominee, Stella Star's debut by Stella Star, a band that doesn't get a lot of attention. Yeah, they're just a lot of fun, um, kind of like soaring 80s Fox Seagulls guitar, very kind of goofy and tongue in cheek at times. But my winner is going to be Hail to the Thief by Radiohead. <laughs> I think this is their most underrated album. It is um, still got some electronic influence on it, but far more rock than either of the previous two stuff. It's a little harder, um, punkier, aggressive, very political, obviously. Um, but I really like the approach to this. You could tell on OK Computer and even the bands, and Amnesiac, obviously, kind of being the kid A, you know, counterpart, that they had like an artistic vision in mind, not concept albums, so to speak, but they definitely had a collective idea of where they wanted to go as a group, as artists. This one seems a little more natural, a little more organic. They kind of just write the songs. They've obviously got some underlying political and thematic stuff going on that seeps in, but I don't think there was like a straightforward, let's make this album like they had before. And I think it works really well. There's just so many great songs on here. And this to me is where they're kind of hitting their stride, especially as a live act, putting out a ton of great B-sides um, and their live performances and stuff like that. I think that Tom is like a perfect blend. This is like his perfect rock star album. He's still pretty at times, like especially on a song like I Will. He sounds great, um, very angelic, really hitting those high falsettos. And there, there, he's being really like passionate, really aggressive. And two plus two, that which is a cool song, two plus two equals five, just builds and builds and builds, has like no structure, just builds to like this ultimate climax. And he's getting really like passionate at the end. Great guitar work, a um, little more straightforward guitar work here by Johnny that we haven't seen in the last few albums. And yeah, Hell of the Thief doesn't get enough love. This is the fourth win for Radiohead for me. And we know In Rainbows is coming up in 07. Will it be a five-time winner? We'll see in a month or so. But yeah, I thought 03 had a lot of great stuff. I love Hail to the Thief. Next year, 2004, is one of my favorite years of all time. Probably a top five, top seven year. I got like eight five-star rated albums for 2004. What do you guys think of 03? What are you looking forward to in 04? What are you thinking? 03 is great. I didn't mention Hail to the Thief because I wanted to give some kind of mystery about what my pick was, but it was right there off my list. Same with uh, Outcast, Speaker Box, Love Below. A lot of 2003 and 4, definitely deep, deep years. 2003 is really good. 2004 is really good. 2004 coming up has two albums that are probably in my top 50 of all time. So I've probably said that about at least 100 albums, but they're, they're really good records. You mean it this time. All right, everyone. Thanks for tuning in to Albums of the Year 2003. Let us know what your favorite albums are of 2003. And take your guesses, please, at what our picks are going to be from 04. I know we kind of um, said that this decade was kind of wide open and unexpected. But I think we're starting to find some kind of common tastes and styles from each of us. Um, it's getting a little easier for me to kind of predict what you guys might be doing. Um, and I'm pleasantly surprised. So thanks for tuning in. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, hit the bell for notifications. Check out our media, social media presence in Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram with the links in the description below. And we will see you next week in 2004 on behalf of Jason and Joe, myself. Take care. See you later. Jason, don't ever call me frozen when you're frozen.